Jack. That's it, Jack. I'm going to go up at White Cross with Charlie before they moved out to Challenger. Before Charlie put the phone in. Yes, we went off in the balloon with Greg and that Norwegian girl. Must be six months since. What's he doing this way, Charlie never said? I don't like the fever. Well, I couldn't just leave him, could I? I don't like the fever. Perhaps they've got it at Chalmer. No. No, they would have said. Charlie would have said. He got no rash or nothing, has he? No lumps under his arms and that? No. It's a tongue. It's too late for Chalmer now. He'll have to wait till morning. Shouldn't you get his clothes off? No, keep him warm. Sweat it out. Fetch another blanket. What's that? Charles Fallen, Jenny Rich. Letters for Charlie and Jenny. What's he? What's he doing? Well, there's only one way to find out. No. No, not, not before asking. We'll ask in the morning. Charlie? Yes, sir. Charlie, uh, listen, I found Jack. He's in a bad way. He got two letters on him. He's got what? Two letters. One for you and one for Jenny. I've got them here. They want me to open them. Greg. What's that? Got to be. What's that, Charlie? Uh, sorry, uh, Seth, yes, listen, um, you can open mine. Uh, no, no, wait. Um, Seth, I'm coming over. I'll be over to you as soon as I can. Right, Charlie? Yes? Is it bad? Bad enough. He's in a coma. Seth, is it plague? No, I don't think so. All right, Seth. I'm coming over. Don't forget to disconnect. Right. Jack has got a fever. He's also got a letter from Greg. No, we don't know that. <laughs> Who else? It's dangerous. I don't care. She's right, Charlie. It's 50 miles. I'll be back tomorrow night. If you're lucky. Look, a bit of patience. You must be joking. No news for six months and then a letter. Can't you do any better than that? I'd like to see you. Here you are. All you have to do is warm it up. Ah, uh, thanks. And now, uh, Charlie, don't give it all to Seth. <laughs> yeah. Now, with a bit of luck, you should be there by four o'clock, so don't forget to man the phone. Well, will if I'm well enough. What's the matter with you, Hubert? I've got a terrible toothache. Oh, that's tough. You man the phone. Now we'll keep going. Whoa. You know it's dark. So we ought to be there by at least eight. OK, OK. Oh, please, Charlie, don't travel in the dark. Bye. Riding from a place in Suffolk, Wellingham. Is, is the girl with him? Agnes. Yes, he says they're both all right. And how about Jack? Well, he's not so good, but he's not the plague. And he's no worse. Well, that's something, I suppose. Now, Hubert? Yeah. Can I hear you speak? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you, Charles. Hubert, they dropped to Norwood. T. 
Did they buy it? Well, what's to do then? Well, when's that? Okay. I want to be with him. Of course you do. Won't be long now. Now I want to go to him. Jenny, he wrote that letter over a week ago. He won't be there anymore. He'll be on his way back. No, he, he, he's going to other places. On the way, yes. I told myself he was dead. Well, he isn't, is he? Just as he needs you. He's got that other ghost. He's got Agnes. Look, Jenny Love. To Greg, there's only one thing more important than getting his blessed machinery going, and that's you. Doesn't he come back to me? Oh, let her be. She's tired and hungry. Come on, get yourself outside some of that. Had a mouthful. Pet cooked it, you know. I didn't. Oh, Susan, it's not that. I'm, I'm just not hungry. Well, you ought to be after riding all day. Make yourself ill. And for what, I'd like to know. If you're not hungry, I mean, if you no, really don't no, want... No, you don't. Well, there's no sense to let it go to waste. It won't go to waste. And there you are, sir. The big man. He's a big pig. No. You can't. You can't do that. You can't. Greg! 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 Just not Jack. Greg. Jack, it's not. Jack, it's Jenny. Can you hear what I'm saying? Je it's Jenny. Jack? Jack, can you hear what I'm saying? This... No. no. What, what are you saying? I don't know. Jack! <laughs> Listen to me, it's Jenny! Agnes. Agnes. Greg. They can't do it. A broken arm. Help me. Help me. He's in trouble. I think easy Greg's now. in trouble. Easy, easy. I'm, I'm going to him. Now, Jenny. Jenny. I'm, Jack is I'm delirious. Going to him, I tell you, I'm delirious. going to him. Yes, yes, of course you are. But He's listen, it may not be as serious as we think. He's broken his yes, arm. All right, we'll go there, but just as soon no, as we're we going. No, if you're not going, I'm going because I don't care what. Seems to have settled down again. Now, Jenny, love, listen. We'll go first thing in the morning as soon as it's light. They what? Well, it went off at first light. What for? Oh, something about Greg and a broken leg. Something about? Oh. This tooth. Oh, it's giving me jip. That doesn't affect your hearing. Mm, that's all you know, ear, nose and throat. Oh, got teeth in your throat now, have you? Well, if you're feeling so poorly, I'll take the 12 o'clock phone call. Suit yourself. How's he? No change. I had to cut the clothes off and they were all caked with blood. 
These gashes, they don't look very nice. They're all inflamed. Do you think you could find me some shepherd's purse? Find what? Some shepherd's purse to put on them. I saw some in the long meadow down by the pig pen. Oh, yeah, I'll look. Oh. Oh. Jack? Dry. Remember me? Seth, the blacksmith. And Susan, at Linden. <laughs> yeah, I found you in a tree. Dogs. That's what I thought. Dogs got my horse. Well, lucky they didn't get you. Greg, Agnes. Yeah, it, it's all right. Charlie and Jenny have gone after him to warn him. Charlie. And Jenny. They left this morning. Uh, they mustn't. What? They, they can't do that to him. Why, Jay? He'll kill him. What's He'll it? be killed. What's that? Tear him to pieces. What's he saying? It's a fever. Meadle. What? Stop him. He'll kill him. Meadle. <laughs> What's he saying? Sound like Needle. <laughs> And talk of killing. Dogs? No. He'll kill him, he say. That's what he say. He'll kill him. But what does it mean? <laughs> Seth, what am I going to do? I, I don't know. Um, don't rightly know. I reckon someone ought to go after them and warn them. Go after them? Well, there's time. They've only been gone six hours. But there's no one here. They're all at White Cross. I go if I could, but I've got no horses shot. Seth, there's only Hubert and me here, and I have to look after the children, and Hubert can't ride. Who says I can't? I can ride better than what you can. Oh, Hubert, don't be so tiresome. This is no time for boasting. Who's boasting? I'll tell you I'm fed up. Treated like the dog's body. It's time I had a bit of respect. I could ride before he was born, and I'd be after them too like a shot I would, if I wasn't crippled. Crippled? What is this dog? Hubert, if you can ride, I can give you something for your tooth. What? Something put by. That's right. Medicinal. Been favoring a leg. It's very hot and swollen. Oh no. Oh, she'll be all right if we leave her here. She'll get better. Hide the saddle away. We'll collect them both when we come back. It's going to be dark soon. Hey. Better eat that up. Not pet like she's worse than Jenny. You know what I think? What? She's not coming back. Who? Jenny. Why? Women's intuition. Into what? Not into anything. Intuition. What women know without knowing why? That's daft. No, it isn't. Boys don't know everything. Come on, you two. It's long past your bedtime. How long will Jenny take to find Greg? Well, with any luck, she might be there by tomorrow. Now, no delaying tactics. Drink up.
Must be nearly there. Mom! Don't help me! Mommy! Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Help! Help me! I'm closing! Mommy! Stay here. No! Well, keep behind me. Oh my, sorry, I'm sorry. Help me, mommy! Oh my, I'm sorry, mommy. I won't do it again. Mom, mom, help, help me, mom! What's that? Who did this to you? Hmm? What's happening? Who are you? Where are you from? Are you from Wellingham? Look, listen, we're friends, do you understand? Friends! Look, tell us what's the matter and we'll help you. Charles, I'm frightened. You know, if I didn't know any different, I'd say that kid was a junkie. A what? A junkie. On drugs. You'd be right. Who are you? And what do you want? My name is Charles Vaughan, and this is Jenny Preston. Richards. There seems to be some doubt about it. Richards is my maiden name. Mm. May I ask what you're doing here? We're looking for a man, Greg Preston. He wrote to us over a week ago from here. He's got a Norwegian girl with him, Agnes. Your husband? We're not married. But you cohabit with him? No, not for six months. Hmm. I see. Are you alone? How do you mean? In coming here. It was just Jenny and me, yes. What do you know of this place? Just what we've seen coming here. They're released Roberts. All right, Joe, if you need to hang about. You seem very well organized. We have to be. Did Preston tell you anything about what we do here in his letter? Where is Greg? He's not still here. No. But he's all right. As far as we know. Mr. Vaughan? He said you had a, a scientist here, a chemist. He said he was a very valuable man. Yes. But do please sit down. We'd rather stand, thanks. Preston left here a week ago. We did our best to persuade him to stay, but he was in a great hurry to get back to you. With a broken arm? I beg your pardon? Greg broke his arm. Really? Well, when did he do that? Well, it must have been when he was here. We were told Greg broke his arm. By whom? By Jack. Jack? Jack Wood. He brought us the letters from Greg. Ah, yes, the sentimentalist. He is more confused than I thought. He was delirious. He had a very bad cold when he left. We did try to warn him, but he insisted on travelling. But Greg's all right. I can assure you, Preston is alive, uninjured, and making his way back to you as fast as that Norwegian girl will let him. Her impatience is understandable. Her countrymen are desperate. We have two of them here. They came over with Preston and the girl. We're doing what we can, but it takes time. So what do you do? Apart from staking out kids for dog bait. We make drugs. I heard we had visitors. Let me introduce Professor Meadle. Jenny Richards, Charles Ball. Welcome. Welcome. And please forgive this, it was an accident. Broken? Unfortunately. At my age, it is easily done. They're friends of Greg Preston. Yes. He talked a great deal about you both, but to see you here, this is a surprise, a most pleasant surprise. Uh, he wrote to you. Yes, I, 
We were worried about him. We've not seen him for six months. Of course. A very remarkable man. To make the journey to Norway and back. A brave man. A man of great determination. A man to be proud of. Yes. But why are you standing and uh, why have you not been offered refreshment? Michael, where are your manners? No, please, we have to go on. Go on? After Greg. But that's impossible. Why? After such a year. You must have been travelling for days. Four. Then you would have met him. No. They're going on to a place called Nettleton. Nettleton? Lincolnshire. They are following a list of places, a list made out by the girl's father. There's a metal worker in Nettleton. A wrought iron. How far is it? My dear young lady, it is at least a week since they left. You will at least stay here tonight. I think we should go on. With one tired horse? You see? I thought perhaps you would lend us horses. Of course, but tomorrow. I absolutely insist that you stay overnight. Thank you. Good. I'll see to it. Be sure uh, we will make you most comfortable. I am attempting to synthesize a substitute for pethidine. What's that? <laughs> ah, yes. It is in itself a substitute for morphine. It was uh, used in Germany during the Hitler War. Uh, the opium poppy uh, does not grow here, you understand. It was imported from Turkey, and of course the stocks are no more. As a matter of fact, I probably scavenged the last of it from a factory near Nottingham. I have some left, not much. I keep it for the real emergencies and for a control. No, without opium, no morphine. And it is far too expensive to synthesize. Expenses. I speak in terms of uh, time. The raw materials are difficult to come by and the process is a long one. No, a synthesis of pethidine is the answer. Yes. Well, it certainly sounds as if you're onto a good thing. None better. But then, it has been my life. What do you do with your drugs? Do with them? Well, even on the National Health, there was a prescription charge. Charge? There is no charge. You mean the drugs are given away? But of course. Well, then how do you live? Please? You eat and drink, presumably. You seem reasonably well looked after. Ah, yes, I understand. There is a small levy, of course. Oh, of course, of course. How small? Oh, Mr. Horn, I am disappointed in you. Are you? Clearly you have been talking to one of our malcontents. Have I? We ask for the raw materials plus our subsistence, and that is all. Well, that sounds fair enough, but uh, who fixes the levy, you or your friend Michael? Farm each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. Uh, where have I heard that before? We apply the principle here. It is often misunderstood. Quite often was, as I remember. Ah, uh, Mr. Vaughan. A person in pain will very naturally object to the provision of a very large amount of willow tree bark in exchange for a very small amount of acetyl salicylic acid. What's that? Aspirin. A man has been brought up in a corrupt economic system. It will not be any more reasonable with a bad headache. 
So you soften him up by leaving him for the dogs. That's something I don't understand. We came across one of your malcontents on our way here. He was staked out on the ground, crucified. We let him go. His name, I believe, was Roberts. Roberts? Yes, that's right. Das kann ich nicht glauben. You let him go. If that's all right with you. Was he harmed? Depends how you mean. He looked pretty ill to me. Yes. This is terrible. I'm sorry that you had to see it. Oh, you mean, as a rule, you keep it better hidden. I mean, Mr. Vaughan, that I did not know of it. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Guest quarters are ready. Ah, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, will you please go with Maria? She will see to it that you are comfortable. Do we have a choice? Yes, Mr. Vaughan. But I ask you to go. Charles, please. Yes, please. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, will you please ask Colonel Clifford uh, to come and see me? Yes, Professor. <clears throat> Are you challenging the way I run things? In this, yes. Such treatment was inhuman. No, it's an exaggeration. Exaggeration? Paul and the woman, they're overreacting. And I'm not? You two, you're all. Let's say you're mistaken. Mistaken? My methods are my own. I'm accountable to no one. It's barbaric. I'm no barbarian. But we have to be tough. It negates all we stand for here. No, it protects what we stand for. It protects you. No, not like that. Face facts. You were nearly killed last week. No. no, 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 listen to me, please. What happens to all we have here with you dead? Killed by something like Roberts. He didn't mean to. What does that alter? What you've got in your head isn't in books. They're just records. You've got a couple of half-trained students. Can you think of anything more lethal than a half-trained chemist? You've got enough problems keeping the rabble out. Roberts isn't rabble. When he did that to you, I let him go because you interceded. He knew what to expect if he came back to steal, and he came back last night. Roberts is not responsible for what he does. Yeah, to come down from those academic clouds. The old liberalism is dead. It died of the plague. A junkie is what he is by choice. If we'd been tougher in the old days, we might have stamped it out. As it was, we gave them prescriptions. They queued at chemist shops and then went away to have their blissful dreams in filthy corners. My dear Michael, people with pain With can't pain be... or without guts. Guest quarters? It's another name for prison. No waters. Charles, let's go. Go where? After Greg. Without horses? They must let us have horses. Must they? Clifford doesn't want them to, they won't. Why should he want to keep us here? I don't know. Perhaps Greg and Agnes are still here. What? Why? I'm not sure. There's too many questions, Jenny. Why should Greg write praising this place? 
It's obvious to anyone with even half an eye that something is very wrong here. And why should Jack be so worried about a broken arm, even if he was delirious? I think Meadle was telling the truth. Mm, maybe. And perhaps the old man doesn't know it all. It's pretty obvious who's the boss man. Greg's still here. Perhaps he found out something. About what? About Clifford. It doesn't take much figuring out, does it? They've got something here that everybody wants. And Clifford's screwing them. And you know Greg. Yes, but why should they keep him here? Charles. He's not dead. Is he? I'm coming too. Yeah, so people raid the place. Mind you, this Colonel character, this this Clifford, he's in his element. Do you know what he does if they catch somebody? He stakes them out for the dogs. Yeah, takes them out of the settlement and pegs them to the ground. Some cold blooded devils in my time, but that one beats bullfighting. Let's hope he catches them in time to warn them. Who? Charles and Jenny. No, I mean, who's gone after them? Oh, Hubert. Hubert? Mr. Vaughan, can I help? Ah, no, no, thanks. Just, uh, just taking a look around. No one's allowed in there. Oh, uh, why? Regulations. Ah. Well, it seems to be a lot of uh, coming and going. Authorized personnel. Oh, and we're not. Sorry. Uh, so am I. Are you going to stop us, uh, shoot us? If I have to. You're joking. No. All I have to do is hit you in the leg. Yes, well. You'd better stay, Jeff, in case of any violent disagreement. 
What were you looking for? Where's Jenny? She won't get far. And she'll come to no harm. Yeah. What were you looking for? Greg Preston! Why should you think he's here? Because you say he isn't. You know, I don't fancy your chances. Of what? Of federating. Unifying us. The survivors. Isn't that what you and Preston want to do? We talked about it. You will need to develop skills I don't think you have. Such as? Diplomacy. Politics. The art of devious maneuver. We can't all be alike. You won't get through to the frightened and suspicious if you're frightened and suspicious yourself. When a cannibal entertains you to dinner, you don't sit by the pot and ask him who's cooking. He might interpret that as criticism and then guess... Greg Preston! What makes you so suspicious? Greg appeared to like it here. From what I've seen, he must have been totally deluded. Yes, of course. Well, what does that mean? It means that in your shoes, I'd probably feel the same. Would you? Oh, yes. Since Preston was here, we've been under attack twice. From whom? From the frightened, the ignorant, the greedy, the dropouts. That sounds very glib. I've had a lot of practice. Preston took a different view from you, as did Carlson before him. Who's Carlson? You don't know? Oh, the Norwegian. They took a different view because I was in the background. Gert Meadel is what this place is all about. I'm only a soldier. You could have fooled me. You have every right to be sour, but no right to a closed mind. Now, will you please hear me out? I'll try. Good. We're a small group here. A small specialist group. 33 of us. 35 as of 10 days ago. Preston left behind a couple of Norwegian students. They're here to study Meadle's methodology and take it back with them. He's a brilliant, saintly old man. He came over from Germany in 1936 and has been avoiding unpleasantness ever since. A place like this was his dream when he came through the plague and it would have remained a dream if I hadn't happened along and realized it. Only a soldier. An open mind. Sorry. This place is a pharmaceutical factory. But a factory needs raw materials and its workers need feeding. We get our raw materials and food from other communities. In return, we give them what we produce. Anything from aspirin to synthesized plaster of Paris. So why the agro? The agro comes from misinformation, ignorance, suspicion. You provide a good example. Oh, thank you. Your sarcasm proves my point. The chemical processing here requires raw materials in bulk. And there's very little to show as an end product. Yeah. So, your suppliers accuse you of extortion? Exactly. But there's nothing in the accusation? Nothing. Then why aren't you believed? As I've said, ignorant and greed inherited habits of thought. Drugs are now more precious than gold ever was. But surely this can be explained? Well, that's been tried, but ignorant and greedy people get violent. The Meadle was attacked last week. He was lucky to get away with a broken arm. I can't afford to take risks. Without him, there is nothing. He's training a successor, but that takes time. Hence the tight security. What about the kid Roberts? He was kicked out six months ago for stealing opium. We have some raw stuff imported. He was Meadle's student, and he dropped out. One of the kind who can't face the world as it is, only as they'd like it to be. He sounds a bit like me. Which is why I'm careful. He's tolerated in a primitive group about 15 miles from here. He stirs them up from time to time. And there are kids like him. They're after the muscarine alkaloid we extract from the Amanita mushroom. The what? It's a substitute for LSD. Why do you make it? A needle needs it to make a substitute morphine. The stuff he gave himself when I set his arm. Oh, but to let a, to let a kid be eaten alive by dogs. Dramatic, don't you think? 
<laughs> What's funny? A professional soldier doesn't enjoy killing, Vaughan. We leave that to the amateurs. There are exceptions. Seven people were killed here in the last year. Two of them ours. All of them unavoidably, and none of them by dogs. Oh, that's lucky. You came in from the west. If you come in from the other side, the side most of our neighbours come in from, you would have seen a skeleton. It's staked out, just as Roberts was. Anybody who cares to examine it closely will find it's made of plastic. Only nobody ever does. Jeff pinched it from Meadle's stuff. Only don't tell him, please. Oh, wait a minute. The kid was staked out, and we came... And watched by Jeff. Where they can't see me. Did you have any trouble in releasing him? It's easy enough for them to loosen a hand, once they stop panicking. And the self-congratulation helps spread the word around. It's a little trick I learned in Malaya. Did you get away with it? Up until now, yes. So keep it to yourself. What, what happens when you, when you rumble, when your bluff's called? And then I'll stop bluffing. Meadle and what he's doing must be protected. Yes, I see. Look, uh, I'm sorry. What for? I misjudged you. Oh, I don't think so, Vaughan. I'm not squeamish, and I don't ask to be loved. But you and Preston are in for a tough time. Oh, that's pessimistic. Realistic. Well, there are still decent and, and reasonable people left. Oh, yes. Enough. Well, that's what we've got to find out, isn't it? Good luck. Uh, I'm going to find Jenny. She'll be all right. Jeff? <clears throat> Sit down. Oh, my God. Cupid. Cartridges. It's all right. Stay back. It's all right, I tell you. How many of you are there? Twenty. Get the others. Charles. Charles. Lock them up. Where are the others? Wake up. Hubert, wake up. I'm afraid you need a great deal more treatment than I can give you, but here's a souvenir. Glad to be rid of that. <laughs> Wish I could see the same. Oh, Charles. All right, all right. Thank God I know where to come to next time. Halsund Beinbruch. <laughs> what does that mean? It means good luck. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and you're going to need it. Well, good luck to you. We're going to need you. Oh, that's better. A distinct improvement. Let's go. Yeah, you're a sentimental old fool. Come on, we got work to do. Charles, please. What's that, Hubert? Or oh, it tastes like gin. <coughs> Did you steal it? When you're with a boat. You better be careful, Hubert. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> 